السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, إن شاء الله تعالى we continue some of the things that ابن القيم رحمه الله uh, mentioned in his book of مدارج السالكين uh, in the levels of servitude and the levels of the عبودية to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we were talking about the السماع or hearing uh, and listening uh, and that this is by itself is an act of عبودية that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to listen uh, in, in many different ways whether it's to listen to the wahi, to the revelation from Allah for a person to submit themselves and for them to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that the believers their way of life is that they are upon sami'na wa ata'na we listen and we obey we listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us a type of listening that the heart is attentive that the person is uh, in need of what they listen to from Kalamullah, from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and therefore they would uh, listen to the best of their ability uh, to learn, to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them for them to act upon it and of course there is the act of ubudiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to listen to the Quran to listen to the matters of ilm, to knowledge, uh, and many different things. Uh, and this is all uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And on the other side, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade for people to listen to, uh, whether it's matters of kufr, uh, vain talk, matters of al-batil, falsehood, uh, to listen to uh, backbiting and slandering and the like of these acts of sins, when the honor and dignity of a believer is being attacked, that a person is not permissible for him or her to listen to that. Uh, and also, when it comes to some things like music and the like of that and singing and things of that nature. And we talked about that. Uh, but one of the things that he mentioned uh, was uh, the subject of a dhawq. A dhawq or tasting right? the word azuk means tasting but this is a word that has been uh, used so much uh, especially with those who innovated things in the religion uh, claiming that this is one of the things that purifies the souls uh, and make them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, the, the Sufis and those who fell into that extremism of uh, thinking that they are purifying themselves in a way that is not according to the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And one of the things or one of the, 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 the principles that deviated them away from the truth is that they make their adhwaq, they make their dhawq, they make their taste is the way of judging what is right and what is wrong. Meaning, something tastes good doesn't have to be something physically tasting good, but something that, you know, religiously feels good, something sounds good, something uh, makes a person feel that he is purified or he's closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, if it's according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasalam, mashallah, this is great. But if it's not according to matters of ilm, knowledge, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasalam, this is nothing but a personal desire. And the desires in this world is not necessarily these physical, sinful desires that people uh, get indulged in uh, that is known to be the major sins. But also, some of these sinful desires can be or can look like it's a, a religious thing. As I mentioned, like someone innovates something in the deen. And they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this innovation. And it makes them feel good. Uh, and that feeling of, of whatever they have, they take it as an evidence that, that what they're doing is good. Because it's a victory, maybe it's something. Uh, so this is such a dangerous thing. 
and it shows that uh, religion is not um, a feeling that a person gets but the religion is based on ilm and this the religion of islam is based on ilm based on knowledge other uh, false uh, religions uh, this is the way that they get their people to be uh, attracted to their falsehood is by making them feel good so for example if the people like the music so let's have music in their worship in their service and people would get engaged and they would like it so much and they would think that they get affected and that works with them in that way you know other things if if people they uh they like to be mixed in their gatherings of uh and including the matters of of uh, of religion so let them be mixed you know and 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 it doesn't stop so the the subject of uh, Zawq is a very dangerous one uh, and they're basically, as he mentioned, these people are not necessarily worshipping Allah, but rather they're worshipping themselves. Uh, even though they might condemn those who are indulged into their uh, sinful desires, but they are more indulged into their sinful desires because they had basically zuhd or turned away from one of the human uh, desires to another human desire that is accord not according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So to make it as a rule, to make it clear, as he says, فَكُلُّ مَنْ خَالَفَ مُرَادَ اللَّهِ الدِّينِي مِنَ الْعَبْدِ فَهُوَ حَظُّهُ وَشَهْوَتُهُ مَا لَنْ كَانَ أَوْ رِيَاسَةً أَوْ صُورَةً أَوْ حَالًا أَوْ ذَوْقًا أو, أو وَجْدًا which means every everything that opposes that is not according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from the people, the religious will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is according basically to the revelation from Allah. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, from the slave of Allah, based on the religion, if it's anything that opposes this, then it's one's hav, it's one's desire, and one's uh, share that a person is going after, whether it's wealth or uh, leadership or an image or a state that a person is in or dhawqan or something tastes good or wajdan, wajdan when someone finds in his heart something. So uh, people, they if they put this forward and before what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them, this is one of the worst situations that a person can be in whatsoever. But and what needs to be done is to put forward is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Even if it's something that a person is not acquainted to or a person doesn't find himself inclined to. But this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And even if, uh, you know, it's difficult for a person to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and go for it and be patient. But to make sure that this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from the person. So uh, so he says that this is basically nothing new than, than what the Christians did and what others did. is basically they find what they feel and they go about uh, what, they, what they're feeling. And this is not religion. Religion is to follow the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, so then uh, he talks about tahkimul wahi. How to protect oneself from this is to judge Everything we have, one of which even our taste of things, is to uh, make the wahi revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the point of reference, the way that we always refer to in anything and any matter. Right? And he says that al-qalb, the heart, uh, would have two types of, of states that can be in. Whether it's hala to huznin wa asafin ala mafqood, and this is important to Basically, see how the hearts uh, are functioning. Either you are in a state of grief or, or sorrow, that you missed something, that you wish that you were upon something but you're not. Or or a state of joy, and a person is pleased with something that is present. Right. So these two situations, uh, to pay attention to how the hearts, they work, Either you are, and this can be in the same day, you can have both. Sometimes this, sometimes that. Not 
something that a person would stay in for days and days. So either to feel sad or to feel sorry, you know, sorry for something or missing something, regretting something of something that is not present, something that is not there. Or when a person is in state of joy and pleased with something that he has or she has. And because of these two things, there are two ubudiyya, two forms of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of these two states that happens to a person. Uh, the first one, which is when a person feels sad that he missed something or sorrow or something like this, there's ubudiyya to rida, which is kind of the opposite of what a person might think. It's to be instead of being pleased with Allah. So when you feel sad, when you feel that you missed something, or you missed out of something, or whatever, then be pleased with Allah. You need to uh, exercise the act of worship of a rida to be pleased with Allah, that this is something that Allah decreed upon you, so you're always pleased. And this is the highest level. And a sabr, a sabr patience, this is the way of ashabul yameen. This is the mandatory level that no one is permissible to be in something less than that. To be patient, seeking rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, even though it tastes bitter or doesn't feel good, you're patient with uh, the commands of Allah, you're patient with the qadr of Allah, and so on. The second state that the heart can be in, which is the state of joy or being pleased with something present, is to establish the ubudiyah of a shukr to be grateful to Allah. And a shakirun or those who are grateful to Allah, they are also of two levels. Like the first level, there is the those who are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala versus the sabirin. So you have a rida and a sabr. And then in the second case, you have the shukr to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shakirun, those who are grateful to Allah, there are two kinds. Sabiqun wa ashabu yameen. The sabiqun, as we know, the two levels in Surah Al-Waqi'ah and in Surah Al-Rahman, so those who are foremost and those who are less than them but still among the righteous ones. Uh, so there are uh, levels of this. So uh, what happens then as a result of that? Shaitan, as we know that he comes to you in the time of ibadah to take you away from the ibadah. So if you are making salah, he will come and try to make you not even make the salah, but if you have, you, you will make the salah. Shaitan will try to take you away from the khushu'ah, take whatever he can from the rewards that you will get in the salah, and so on. So the same thing, the shaitan will be present, comes to you in these two acts of worship, to take you away from it. Take you away from being pleased with Allah, take you away from being patient, or take you away from being grateful. Right, so how is that? He says, The shaitan will come to you in these two states with a, a very despicable, evil sounds, which is mentioned in some of the texts. This is from the shaitan. So, two sounds, two things of the shaitan. One is the, the sound of wailing or screaming when a person is sad, for example, or when death happens or something like this, which is forbidden for a person to wail. It's okay to cry, but not to wail or to beat oneself up and things like this. So Shaitan has his way in this for some ignorant ones. And uh, the sound also, the, vo the voice of Allah wal mizmar wal ghina, the voice of uh, musical instruments, singing and the like of this when people are in state of joy and they attain something. So this is the ways, one of the ways of the shayateen to take people away from being pleased with Allah at times of sadness or being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times of joy. And uh, the, uh, the, the, to negate this is with these two acts of worship. And there is a hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu that the Prophet mentioned this. He said, I have been forbidden from two sounds, ahmak, that one's foolish, fajirayni, evil and sinful. Sawti wailin inda musiba, the sound of uh, wail, uh, woe or, or wailing at times of a calamity, 
وصوت مزمار عند نعمة and the sound of a mizmar a sound of a uh, the, the flute or a musical instrument at times of a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, and this is whoever has less of the light of the Prophet والسلام, meaning his sunnah then this is a person might be, might be at ease with the ways of the shayti so um, how to cure this very briefly how to cure oneself from this Because it's, again, we're talking about listening to things at times of happiness, at times of sadness, at all times. What is the dawa? What is the cure? He says, أَنْ يُنْقَلَ بِالتَّدْرِيجِ إِلَى سَمَاعِ الْقُرْآنِ بِالْأَصْوَاتِ الطَّيِّبِ To transfer oneself gradually by listening to the Qur'an from those who have nice voices. Right? And nice voices not necessarily those who are not following the the Qur'an and the Sunnah in reciting the Qur'an. But not just listening to some voices, imani fi tafahumi ma'ani by immersing oneself, reflecting upon the understanding of the meanings of the Qur'an. وَتَدَبُّرِ خِطَابِهِ قَلِيلًا قَلِيلًا And to reflect upon the khitab with the message of the Qur'an what it addresses, قَلِيلًا قَلِيلًا Small, little, after, little, you know, not You know, step by step. Till, you know, if a person is consistent in this, إلى أن ينخلع من قلبه سماع الأبيات. Till the listening to the poetry or listening to whatever a person was indulged in, this will be uprooted from his heart. And instead, it will be the love of uh, in the heart to listen to the ayat of the Quran. وَيَصِيرَ ذَوْقُهُ وَشُرْبُهُ وَحَالُهُ وَوَجْدُهُ فِي Then it becomes his taste and his state and what his heart is immersed in and he finds himself you know, present in whenever he listens to the Qur'an. So, فَحِنَائِذٍ يَعْلَمُ هُوَ مِنْ نَفْسِي أَنَّهُ لَمْ يَكُنْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ When he reached that state, he would then discover that he was not upon anything before. And he would see how he wasted his life in this other state of sinful life or listening to other than the Qur'an and being indulged into understanding it. He mentioned uh, uh, famous lines of poetry, وَكُنْتُ أَرَى أَنْ قَدْ تَنَاهَا بِيَ الْهَوَى إِلَى غَايَةٍ مَا فَوْقَهَا لِي مَطْلَبُ فَلَمَّا تَلَاقَيْنَا وَعَيَنْتُ حُسْنَهَا تَيَقَّنْتُ أَنِّي إِنَّمَا كُنْتُ أَلْعَبُ Even though the lines of poetry was with someone talking about his loved one, he says, I used to Uh, whenever I, I see that my, my desire or my love reaches such a high state uh, that I don't have any other be beyond that. Uh, and he thought that he was in, in such a state. But then once he met his loved one and he saw how beautiful they were, then I had the certainty that I was just playing. Right? So meaning that it wasn't what he is, is, he, is even beyond what he thought. So the point here is, is that people... always mis misjudge things. Those who do not get themselves into this level after level and patience in being obedient to Allah and listening to the Quran and so on, they do not know what it means to be in that state till they put themselves into this effort. Different than this, the sinful life. The sinful life is, is very easy for people to fall in because you get immediate uh, feelings right away. But for, with matters of deen, it requires... submission first it requires sacrifice it requires for those who are truthful only to take that path requires sacrifice requires that person doesn't feel anything there's no feelings there's no doubt there's no taste of anything maybe right and then with because but he knows that this is the truth and this is what based on clear uh, evidences and even reason and intellect and everything but just be patient with it and keep on being patient with it and being steadfast And it's not a goal in itself that you would feel this or that. You're a slave of Allah anyway. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shakur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most grateful. Then a person would uh, reach that state by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, then uh, he continued with this subject. Uh, but because of the time, we'll stop here, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and I would say where we stopped here. He says, وَمُنَافَاتُ النَّوْحِ لِلصَّبْرِ والغناء للشكر أمر معلوم بالضرورة من الدين 
the, uh, basically what he's saying that and now wailing how it negates a sabr or negates patience and how al ghina singing negates a shukr when someone is singing and using musical instruments and so on that they're, they're negating the fact that they're being grateful to allah this is something that is well known in religion by necessity how is that this is what uh, will be mentioned inshallah ta'ala next time if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wa kama fi tayyib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa barakatuh muhammad wa sallam wa sallam wa rahmatullah